welcome to my latest Love Ultras. It's now Sunday the 21st of April 2019 and we're actually in our camper van and we're on Sky. We came for the Easter weekend, we've had a few days camping in our van and the weather's been a bit mixed, been a bit wet today but we've had a good trip round and yesterday I went up Blaven and we had a walk up to the fairy pool so we've had a really good few days away and heading back tomorrow. So I thought for this latest uh, Love Ultras video, it's now four weeks to go to the Dragon's Back. The race starts on Monday the 20th of May, so basically four weeks tomorrow the race will be starting. And I thought for this one I'd just share some thoughts about what I'm feeling about the race and my preparation and I put it under three headings. First of all my training, secondly the recce runs I've done and then thirdly just my plans and thoughts about uh, gear and the race. So thinking about my training, I set out to do a 19 week training plan and I've now completed week 15 and in that 15 weeks I've basically averaged 4.2 runs per week, I've averaged 44.42 miles and roughly just over 10 hours of on average 10 hours of running each week and the key figure for me in a sense is I really wanted to try and do at least 5,000 feet of climb every week and my average for the the 15 weeks is 6,792 so I've achieved that and I must admit the last few weeks I can really see the benefit of having done so much ascent and descent on the Munros particularly around Scotland it's really helped me in my preparation I'm accepting the fact that I'm never going to be fast on the downhills but I am feeling more comfortable as the uh, as the weeks have gone on so I'm really happy with my physical training I've worked hard I've, um, I've put in the put in the effort I've done pre pretty well every session I've wanted to do and I've been able to um, to get the physical training and uh, a mixture of fartlek work on with a club a mixture of a lot of hill running some easy runs as well and then also longer runs on the Munros and on the the uh, the actual dragon's back course the second thing I wanted to just reflect on and think about is the the recce runs that I've done I've now completed the whole course so I've done five weekends down in Wales and then um, in last July I did day one with Andy last August I did day two again with Andy and day three in October and then this year I did day four in April and then uh, no sorry day four in in sorry, day five in february and then i did day four just a couple of weekends ago or last weekend in fact with uh, with mark and andy so i've covered the whole route and that gives me a lot of confidence really to know that there's no surprises i know what's coming i can look at the map now and i can visualize most of where i have to go and what i'm doing so that gives me a big advantage i think just for myself just to know where things are I would say from the five days, day two is definitely going to be the toughest. I think day one's obviously tough, you're going over lots of high mountains, but the paths are fairly good and also you're fresh. I think day two is going to be a tough one and most people say that and I can see why because underfoot it's a lot harder you've got a lot more uh, rocky ground you've got some tough descents you've got a lot of ground a lot of ground which is wet and boggy and that sort of uh, clumpy grass uh, tusky grass so i'm expecting day two to be the, the toughest one and um, days three and four even though they're longer i'm looking forward to those some great views some good paths and I feel as though you can move a little bit quick, quicker on those days. And then day five, I think you're just trying to survive and get through the, the final. So, as I said, I'm glad I've done all the reccees, uh, so I know what uh, know what to look forward to. I've made lots of videos of them, so I'm going to watch those again over these next four weeks, just to remind myself of different places and some of the key decisions that you need to make navigation-wise. The other thing that's been good on the recce is I've been able to hone down my navigation and how I'm going to do that. So obviously map and compass is going to be the first thing and I'll have my map out the whole time. Um, but also I'm really confident with the GPX line I have on my Sunto watch and I'm going to basically keep that on as a comfort blanket really to be able to follow the route. Um, but also I've got two apps on my phone, uh, OS Maps and UK Maps and they work when it's on uh, airport mode when you don't need the 3G, 4G and they work great and again just been able to have confidence with those that if I do go off the map 
uh, and off my GPX line, then I, I'm, I'm able to know exactly where I am and be able to work it out on the map. So that's been good on, on the recce's as well, to actually see it in practice, how that works out using the GPX. And then the third thing I wanted just to talk about in this one was my, my plans and the, the things that I'm aiming to do. Um, I'm really happy with the gear. I've tested it all out. I'm going to be wearing the Ultra Lone Peak shoes. Um, I have, this, I'm on to the third pair now. I had the, the original pair I bought last year, I've done the first three recce's with and other races. And then I bought a new pair, which basically we're going to do for the race and probably will. But when we did the recce last weekend, I was chatting to Mark and asking him whether he'd have a spare pair of shoes. And he said, oh, definitely. What will happen if you if you, something happened to your shoe? That could be the end of your race. And I thought, yeah, I hadn't planned to take a spare pair of shoes. But that obviously makes a lot of sense. So I bought a new pair. Hopefully I won't use them. But it'd be good to have them available just in case anything did go wrong with the pair that I'm wearing. Because the thought of, of getting halfway through day three and your shoes falling apart and you can't finish the race that would be a bit silly so i'm going to have those the rest of my gear it all tried and tested happy with all that and uh, looking forward to just putting use, using all the stuff rucksack uh, water bottles uh, shorts socks all the rest of it happy with all that and um, the other thing i'm gonna just w i've been working on is the food and um Obviously, on a race like this, you need to make sure you're fueling and you have to take it with you for the whole week. So stuff which I might have used in other races won't last until day four or five. So I've been thinking about that a bit more. And again, chatting with Mark last, last uh, weekend, he talked about having some uh, food which you could eat cold in the checkpoints. So uh, Kachin's going to help me with that. And I think basically I'm, what I'm going to do is have some baked beans. There's a, some of the Heinz have that nice five beans, which I really like, and then cook some sausages and chop them up and put them within a small bag. So I can have those at the halfway point each day. And I'm going to try that out in the Great Lakeland uh, event, which is two weeks time that I'm doing in the Lake District. So I'm going to try out that and see how that works and whether I can comfortably eat cold beans and sausage halfway through a day. I've had cold baked beans in the past before, so I'm not expecting it to be a problem, but it will be good to try that out. And then the final thing which I think I was thinking about is just camp craft. And that's one of the things which I have been able to practice a bit on the uh, Ring of Fire that I did last year around Anglesey. But we stayed in a, a leisure centre one night and then a village hall the other night. So it was slightly different. So I'm glad I'm doing this Great Lakeland because it'll be a small tent I'll be sleeping in. Um, but it will be a camp atmosphere. Um, so again, I can just practice what I need to do, finish an event and uh, to get ready for the next day. And the Great Lakeland, I think, is a good event to do. It's on similar ground, but it's not quite so long. So the days are sort of 27 miles rather than 35 plus. So hopefully my plan is to just to enjoy that event, but try and finish feeling as though I could do more rather than uh, feeling as though I'm at the end of my tether, as it were. So basically, I feel as though all I need to do now is put it all together. I've done all the recce's, I've trained as hard as I can. I've got a couple more weeks of training and then two weeks of um, uh, two weeks of taper. And hopefully I'll be on that start line on the 20th of May, ready to go and looking forward to see if I can accomplish and finish this race. Mm -hmm.